individuals befriend each other at an East Coast liberal arts college, and their lives and destinies are intertwined thereafter. Matrimony is the touching novel that follows their journeys together and apart. Author Joshua Hankin joins us today. Welcome, Joshua. Nice to be here. Tell us what Matrimony is about. Uh, Matrimony is a novel that takes place in the mid-80s at a fictional New England college, and it's basically about the friendship uh, between four characters. And it's about what happens when they meet, fall in love, and eventually get married, and what takes place over the next basically 20 years. Um, the things they endure, infidelity, uh, success, failure, good luck, bad luck. And then in a sort of more metaphorical way, the book is about what it means to be in your 20s and 30s when you're sort of an adult but you're not yet fully formed and you make decisions that have consequences down the road that you aren't aware of yet. Um, and the book is also about the writing life. Julian is an aspiring novelist and a novelist who has some success over the course of the book. Describe for us the main characters in your story. So there are four characters in the story. Julian Wainwright and his best friend Carter Hines, um, and Carter's girlfriend Pilar, and Julian's girlfriend Mia. Um, and Julian is the son of a very wealthy investment banker from the Upper East Side, and Julian has spent his whole life wanting to get away from that. Carter Hines is a scholarship kid. He's much, much poorer than most of his classmates, so certainly much poorer than, than Julian is. And he has a chip on his shoulder about it. They're best friends, but there's certainly a, a strong rivalry between them. It's a certain kind of um, male friendship that may be particularly characteristic of college kids, but I think of uh, men of all ages. There's affection, but there's rivalry. The way that Julian meets Mia is they discover her together in the freshman Facebook. She's Jewish, Julian is a wasp, and he falls in love with her and basically ends up following her all over the country in, vari in various ways. What impressions of life as a struggling writer have you incorporated into the book? A lot of them. Part of what Julian is doing is he's spending a long time on a book. He spends 15 years on, on, on his novel. And Mia actually spends almost 15 years on her dissertation. They're kind of parallel struggling writers, each with uh, their own writer's block. Uh, my first novel, Swimming Across the Hudson, I wrote in three years, and this one took 10 years. And I threw out literally thousands of pages. And I think a writer has to be willing to kill their babies, as people say. And I think that it really takes a couple of years to know, not if, not if it's going to be a good novel, but if it's going to be a novel at all. I mean, you know, there's so many people out there who think they want to write but aren't actually doing it. A lot of them say things like, oh, I'd love to be a writer you know, if only I had the time. And I'm always tempted to tell you know, a doctor who says this to me that I would love to be a brain surgeon if only I had the time. <laughs> um, and so I think it's a way in which people from the outside romanticize what it's like to be a writer, but people who are actually living it know that it's a job like everything else. Which novelist do you find inspiring? Um, I would say that my fiction in general is in sort of the realist mode. Um, John Cheever's short stories, um, I really like Richard Russo's Empire, Empire Falls, um, Ian, Ian, McEwen, Ian McEwen's Atonement. Uh, Wallace Stegner's Crossing to Safety is a novel that really inspired the book in some way because that too is an academic novel that takes place between two couples and it's about fiction writing. Uh, Claire Massoud's Emperor's Children. I like Laurie Moore's short stories, Amy Bloom's short stories. I think if you like those books, uh, you'll really like, like my book. The novel starts in New York City and ends in New York City. In what way does home pull on Julian and on the other characters in the book? There's a way in which the story is both about how you can never go home again and also you can never leave. And in the end, part of what brings Julian home is that he finds out that his parents are getting divorced. He's in Iowa at the Iowa Writers Workshop. He and Mia have split up at that point. They eventually get back together. But he gets a call from his mother while he's in Iowa saying that, her fa that his father has left her. And he's incredibly shaken up, but he's also surprised by his reaction, because I think he did believe that he was past his parents. And in that sense, this book is really about, it's about a time of life when you're still young, but middle age is looming. By the end of the book, Julian has a kid of his own. Julian and me have a baby. And that, to me, is what middle age is, is when you're taking care of both your parents and your children. And I think that New York, as the place where his parents live, where his parents have always lived, where he grew up, serves in that way to remind him that, you know, you can't really leave. Well, thank you, Joshua. It's been wonderful to have you here. Thanks. I really enjoyed it.